I have come here tonight to talk to you about bird watching. British bird watching. British birds are to be found flying about all over Britain and they are really good to watch. Go out of doors and there they are, millions of them, all flying about with myriad hues. I say all, though of course you may point out that the penguin and the kiwi cannot fly, which of course is quite true. But they're not British birds, are they? So don't be so cocky. Sparrows. These are lovely birds for the beginning bird watcher to watch. They're brown and there's millions of them all over the place. Go out into the park and throw breadcrumbs hither and thither. And very soon there'll be millions of them all fluttering and chirping. They've got a lovely song. It goes something like this. Chirp! Chirp! Of course a lot of pigeons will probably come after your comestibles, but ignore them and watch all the millions of sparrows. I once watched 27 sparrows. There may have been even more than that, but it was very, very difficult to count them because they all got the same faces and they all kept hopping about and I had to rush off to go to the lavatory in a hurry. One good tip to remember when bird watching is that it's a, no good jumping up and down and shaking a football rattle because they all fly away. You can learn by my mistakes. Tips. I shall be talking about these later. Flat pigeon. This bird is to be found in most major cities and even quite small towns. It's a very difficult British bird to identify because of the many various shapes and sizes it comes in. One thing that all flat pigeons do have in common is the colour, usually grey and red. They're usually seen in the middle of roads, though sometimes you see them at the side of roads. They often measure up to two feet long. It's all dependent on the speed, weight and tyre of the vehicle that flattened them. Blackbird. These are nice birds. They really are very black. They fly really nicely. One of the beetles once wrote a nice song about one. I watched a blackbird flying nicely once. I knew it was a black word almost instinctively by its colour. Penny Lane, I think that was the name of that song. Great Tits. I, I shall be talking about these later. Swans. Did you know that all the swans in the British Isles and the Commonwealth and the Falklands belong officially to Her Majesty the Queen? Well, they do. If I owned all those swans, I'd sell most of them and get very rich and buy some binoculars. But I'm not the Queen, and the Queen doesn't bother to sell all the swans because she's already very, very rich with all worldly trappings and she doesn't need the money and she's probably got loads of binoculars. I wish I was the Queen and owned all these swans, wouldn't you? If you'd like to have some binoculars too, I bet you would. The best way to spot a swan is by its long white neck. But don't confuse it with a goose. You can easily tell the difference because you can eat a goose for Christmas. But you're not allowed to eat a swan. Only a radiant majesty can eat swans. I bet she even feeds swans to the corgis. You can watch birds much better if you've got binoculars. If you are very rich and you've got some, or if you're the queen in disguise, do you think I could borrow them for a while? I'll be very careful with them and return them in perfect condition. Budgies. This is not technically.
mostly a British bird, but a lot of British people keep them in their houses, so I thought I'd mention them. They come in all sorts of colours, light blue, dark blue, medium blue, light green, dark green, medium green, yellow, pink, white, pinky yellow, whitey pink, greeny blue, pinky green, yellowy pinky, whitey green, and lots of other colours. Greeny pink, blue, yellow, etc, etc. If you let them out of their cages, they fly about the room, and then they land on your head and do plops on you. Well, they land on my head and do plops on me. You can teach budgies to talk. You can teach them to say, Pretty boy, hello Joey, good morning, good night. Who's a clever boy then? I don't know why. Budgies can give you a nasty bite on the end of your nose. It doesn't half hurt. Eagle. This is a bird of prey. I shan't make a pun. Eagles eat up other birds such as sparrows, pigeons, blackbirds, etc. But not swans. The Queen doesn't allow it. It's a wonder there are any birds left to watch with all them eating and ripping up what the eagle does. I wouldn't mind if they ripped up budgies though. Most eagles live up in Scotland and it serves them right. Badger. This is not a bird. Raven. There are lots of ravens at the Tower of London and I think that the Queen owns them as well as all the swans. It doesn't seem fair to me. Ostrich. This is not a British bird. But I did watch one at the zoo in London. It was very good to watch. It had lovely plumage. I could have stopped, stood there, stopped watching it and its plumage for hours and hours. I've never seen such smashing plumage. I did stand and watch its plumage for about half an hour, but then this keeper told me to piss off and be quick about it. I'd like to be an ostrich keeper, then I could was watch ostriches all day long. I don't think ostrich keepers get much money though. That's probably why they're so bad tempered. Ostriches hide their heads in the sand. They don't have any sand in the zoo, which was a pity. I was looking forward to seeing that. They got very long necks and they stretch their heads over the wire fence and steal your sandwiches. But I didn't mind because I enjoyed watching it so much and anyway I had enough money left for a bag of chips. Seagull. These make a great sound. Tweet! 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 They go, but it sounds better than it looks on paper. They've got big yellow webbed feet and they eat fish and sandwiches, but I don't think they're any relation to ostriches. They spend their whole life on holiday at the seaside. I wouldn't mind being a seagull. Albatross. They used to hang these round the necks of ancient mariners if they caught them writing poems. Chicken. These birds don't fly. They've got no plumage and they've got no heads or feet and they're freezing cold until you cook them. They're extremely boring to watch. Dodo. This is supposed to be extinct but I've ne never seen or smelled one. Turkey. This is almost the same as chicken, only much bigger and more expensive. Inside their bodies they've got a plastic bag full of horrible stuff. I wouldn't like to be a turkey. Peasants. Rich people shoot peasants. They go out with guns and docks, we treaders, and shoot all the peasants to pieces. Then they all go home and have a booze up. Uh, that's the rich people, not the peasants. Guinea fowl. This is a pre-decimalisation bird. It has not yet been brought up to date with the rest of British birds. Ostrich. 
I know that I've mentioned these birds before, but I'm very keen on them and their plumage. They've got big long legs and they can run very, very fast. I bet an ostrich could run even faster than Trevor Perkis. Mind you, I haven't actually been able to arrange a, r a race between Trevor Perkis and an ostrich, but I bet the ostrich would win if it did. It must be very, very fast, because Trevor Perkis is the fastest runner in our whole street. Duck. These swim about in ponds and are very good to watch, but not as good as ostriches. You can watch them swimming or walking about and they make very good pets, but they're very hard to catch and I fell in and my underpants got all wet. Ducks are a bit like small swans, but the Queen doesn't own them. <laughs> and a good job too. Tits. Tits like melons. Tits like marrows. Tits like bananas. In fact, tits like almost every fruit and vegetable. Great tits. See above, but bigger. To sum up, I'd like to say that although I like most British birds, I think ostriches are the best and you don't really need binoculars to watch them. Thank you.